Hey, welcome to another video. Before we get into extrema, absolute maxes, mins, local or relative maxes and mins, I wanted to talk about increase and decrease because the way that I'm going to define local maxes and mins is the change where we change from increase and decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And that gives a little peak or a, a little trough there. And so we need to really understand what increasing and decreasing mean in a graph in order for us to interpret that accurately. So let's take a look at that for just a little bit. So when we say you're going to get a formal definition in your textbook, wherever you're going out of, when we say that a function is increasing, here's what we mean. And then practically, here's what we can look for. Increasing in a function or a graph means that if I take an x value and look at one just larger than that, so as we're moving from left to right on the x-axis, then the function's input is growing, and the function's output, if we're increasing, is also growing. So if I say, hey, take a look at an x value and one to the right of it, then the output will be larger as we move to the right. That's what, incre that's what this says uh, in English. It says, as you look from left to right, so an x value and one bigger than it, as you look from left to right, what's your function doing? If a function's increasing, then the output will be getting larger as you move from left to right. So um, in English, what this says is from left to right, the graph climbs. That's what increasing means. For decreasing, the opposite happens. Uh, this says, hey, look at, look at your, look at your x values. Um, if you have an x value that is getting larger as you move from left to right, then your output will be getting smaller. And that would create this graph that is falling as we move from left to right. A couple notes to really keep in mind. All of this is given by an open interval. You will never, ever use brackets or equal signs with increasing and decreasing. And the reason why is because if we're increasing, it has a connotation that as we're moving from left to right, the graph continues to climb and climb and climb and climb. That means that the next value has to be bigger than the previous one, and you can't stop uh, or, or create this, this closed interval and have an increasing idea. It could have increased until that point, uh, but it can't be increasing because the next value would not be there. And so we can't check to see, well, what's the next value past an endpoint. So if we have an endpoint, you can't say it's, uh, well, let's say, you can't say it's increasing at that endpoint because there's no next value to test whether to see if the output is higher than the one that you're looking at. So in order for something to, to have increasing, you have to have an open interval, something that says you continue to get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger to test whether to see if those outputs are getting higher and higher or smaller and smaller. You can't do that if we start closing things off. So all of our, our intervals are always open for increasing and decreasing, and they're always given by the x-axis. Do you remember me telling you how a lot of things in, um, in graphs are determined by the x-axis. Really only a range, a couple other things are determined by the y-axis y idea, but like domain, x-axis idea, x -axis idea. Where we're above or below the x-axis, x-axis idea. So what increase and decreasing really asks in English it is this. Increasing says, tell me the part of the x-axis where when you look from left to right, your graph is climbing. Decreasing says, tell me the part of the x-axis where if you look from left to right, your graph is falling. That is what increasing and decreasing mean, as simple as I can make it. So we're going to look at some intervals. I'm going to use only interval notation today. Um, you can translate this to, to inequality notation, no problem. But let's take a look at this first graph. We want to look for increasing first and then decreasing later. You can do them backwards, it doesn't really matter. But let's take a look at it. When we say, I'm looking for the intervals of increasing, uh, what we're looking for is the interval, the part of the x-axis, where when I read it from left to right, that's what this means, left to right. When I read from left to right, my graph is climbing. So not right to left and my graph is, is climbing. That, that's not what we're talking about. But as I read it from left to right, my graph is climbing. So is the graph climbing on this interval? No, 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 the graph is falling. As I read from left to right, this graph is falling. Then I get to here, then it climbs, 
then I get to here, and then it falls, then I get to here, and then it climbs. Notice my right hand was tracing the graph, but my left hand was looking at my interval on my x-axis. Your The left hand here is what's determining your intervals of increasing and decreasing. So again, it's the section of the x-axis where, as you read it from left to right, my graph is climbing. That's what increasing means. So I'm, I'm looking at this going, all right, um, here, to here, my graph is falling. Oh, right here, right here at negative two. It starts to increase until I get to zero. So one interval of increasing would be on the x-axis from negative two to zero. This is increasing. I'm just put an i there. That's an interval of increasing. Then at zero, it's, it's well, at zero. At zero, am I increasing at that point? Am I decreasing at that point? Well, well, no, this is the reason why our intervals have to be open. At zero, I'm neither increasing nor am I decreasing. That's called a local max. We'll talk about it next time in the next video. But this is where we will change from increasing to decreasing. So we have this idea of open intervals for increasing and decreasing because you have to have, have the ability to get larger with every point that you're, that you're checking. With every x value that gets larger, your function must get larger for increasing, must get smaller for decreasing. So we have this open interval from negative two to zero where our graph was climbing as I'm looking on the x-axis from left to right. There's another one. So here I'm looking from here to here, my graph is falling. Then from here to here, we're increasing, no problem, it's climbing. From zero to two, my graph is falling, and then the next section of the graph where I look at my x-axis and my graph is climbing as I move from left to right is from two to four. This is another section of increasing. My graph is climbing on this portion of the x-axis as I read from left to right. So when I put all this together and we say that the increasing, the, the intervals of increasing are the parts of the x-axis where when I look from left to right, my graph is climbing. That's from negative two to zero that's also from two to four. We must use open intervals for all of those sections of the x-axis. It's a climbing idea. It doesn't have climbed and then you stop here. Uh, you always have to have an open interval so that you can, you can satisfy this, so that there's a next point and there's a next point and there's a next point. Open intervals let you do that. Get as close as you want without actually stopping. And so to do that, we got to have open. Decreasing is, is the opposite idea. So as you're still moving from left to right, but as you're moving from left to right, your graph is, is falling. So find the intervals on the x-axis where when I look from left to right, my graph is falling. Well, my graph starts at negative four and it's falling until we hit negative two. So this right here would be an in a interval of decreasing and another interval of decreasing. So our graph decreases. In this case, our graph is decreasing wherever it's not increasing. Sometimes you can have a constant, so where it's horizontal for a time and then it will neither increase nor decrease, it'll just stay constant. We can, we can deal with that too. Uh, but in our case here, we have an interval of decreasing, section x axis where our graph is falling, as I read from left to right, is negative four to negative two, open interval. Then again from zero to two. That is how increasing and decreasing work. They're always open, they're always intervals of the x axis. Super important for us to understand that. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the, the next one. We'll, we'll do this one over here. Can you look and see, man, you should be doing this. See if you can find the one interval of increasing. So the only interval of increasing is I look from left to right on the x-axis where my graph is climbing. So I'm gonna use two hands here. Left hand is, is looking at my intervals. It's staying steady on the x-axis. It's gonna mark where I start and stop. My right hand is tracing. So. Here I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Oh, I hit a low point. Now I'm climbing. I'm gonna put a little mark right there. That's gonna be where I start increasing. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, I stop increasing, put another little mark. That right there is how we determine the interval of the x-axis where a graph is climbing. So I was fall I was falling until I get to here, I started increasing. I stopped increasing. That right there is my interval of increase. It does not increase outside of that. So interval of increasing is just from negative one to one. Now decreasing gets a little awkward when we think about what's going on here, but, and, and the arrows, they look confusing. Cause you go, oh, well that's, that's increasing. No, it's not. It's not increasing because the way we read our graph has to be from left to right as our X's are getting larger. 
So we put our hand on our x-axis and we go, okay, our graph is falling from where? Well, falling on the x-axis, this hand is way over at negative infinity. Negative infinity is over here and positive infinity is way over here. So our graph is falling on the x-axis, on that interval, the interval that this, this graph is falling on is from negative infinity all the way until negative one. So decreasing wise, this graph is decreasing on the x-axis from negative infinity to negative one. And then again, so let's see, uh, now I start to increase, I stop increasing, oh, I'm starting to decrease again. So it's decreasing from one, and then it never stops decreasing. It goes down, but my left hand keeps on with that x-axis forever. That's going to be decreasing into positive infinity. So we'd be decreasing here and decreasing here, and it doesn't end. I hope that's making sense to you. I hope the idea of your, your left hand is kind of your marker. So where, where, you, where you're decreasing, you're marking a decrease, and then when you, when you change, when you start increasing, make a little mark. So I'm decreasing, and I start increasing. That makes my little mark here. We're increasing and then I stop and that's going to show you where your interval is. Okay, this one's this one is tricky because of this right here because it looks like it, sometimes we get some weird graphs and we have to kind of assume where it crosses the x-axis so that it keeps on going forever. You should be looking at this and finding your intervals of increasing right now. You should be looking at that finding increasing. So as far as finding increase, I'm going to trace the graph with my, my right hand. I'm going to look at my left hand, and wherever my pencil starts to climb, as I move from left to right, that starts my interval on the x-axis for increasing. So I'm falling here. I'm falling right here. I start to increase. So I'm going to increase, 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 increase. I'm falling this with my left hand. I'm hitting this going, oh, now I'm going to start to decrease. I'm going to stop that. So this first interval from negative 2 to 0, that part of the x-axis is where my graph is climbing. So again, I'm at 0 now. I'm falling, 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 falling. Oh, I stopped falling. Now I'm climbing again. So this next interval is an interval of increasing. That starts at 2, and it doesn't end. Those are my two intervals on the x-axis where my graph is climbing. And that's exactly what we're showing. They're always open. They never include the values because of the definition that we have for increasing and decreasing. Now decreasing, I'm going to show the intervals on the x-axis where I'm falling. So again, I'm going to take this and go, oh yeah, hey, I start off falling. And because this goes forever, it will eventually get, remember, x-axis idea is one-dimensional, it eventually get to negative infinity. So this graph is fall, way over here. It's falling, 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 all the way to negative 2. That's an interval of decreasing. And then, okay, so now I'm increasing, increasing, increasing. Oh, it's starting to fall again. So I'm going to make another interval of decreasing until we get down to this point and on the x-axis until we stop at positive 2. That's another decreasing from 0 to 2. Are you seeing how to work that? Are you seeing how, hopefully you're seeing how, how to make your interval, your graph is doing one thing, but the intervals of increase and decreasing are only on the x-axis. So only look one dimension when you're writing those intervals. Last one, is that graph ever decreasing? Is it ever decreasing? The answer is no, it's not. Because as we move from le left to right, there's nothing going on here. I wouldn't include this interval at all. So I'm going, there's nothing going on. Why would I include that? There's no graph over here. But right when I hit that zero, oh, my pencil's down here. So at zero, open interval here. It's not, there's no point at zero, it's not defined. But it's just past zero, my pencil's way down here. And as I trace this, my graph is climbing along this portion of the x-axis. It's increasing the whole entire time. It'll never peak. It's going to get really slow, but it'll never peak. So this is increasing from, let's, let's see again, it starts off at zero, and then it climbs forever. Open interval, there is no interval of decreasing, it never falls. I hope that gives you a good interpretation of what increase and decrease mean, how it is always on the x-axis. You, you can tell how easy it is for students to go, oh, it's increasing from negative whatever this number is to positive whatever. It's very easy to make that misconception. If we really focus on this as 
um, increase and decrease are intervals of the x-axis only where your graph is climbing. Do it the way that I, I showed you, and typically that works pretty well. So that's going to be where we're going to stop on this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how where we change from increasing to decreasing in a neighborhood around that point, we will have a peak. And in the neighborhood around where we change from decreasing to increasing, we'll have a little trough. And those are going to be local or relative maximum. We'll talk about that and absolute maximum in the next video.